So today's topic is the average revenue and the marginal revenue under monopoly or monopolistic competition. So monopoly or monopoly monopolistic competition they are all you know forms of imperfect competition. So we have discussed in detail the marginal revenue and average revenue under perfect competition. So now we are going to discuss about the average revenue and marginal revenue under imperfect competition. So there are basically three forms of imperfect competition that is monopoly, monopolistic competition and oligopoly. So monopoly would mean again we will discuss in detail the various forms of market in the next chapter but just to make you understand what is monopoly monopoly means there is only one firm who is controlling the whole market system so setting of price determination of price supply it is all controlled and regulated by a single firm so monopoly what about monopolistic competition monopolistic competition would mean you know different or many large firms or companies competing with each other that is called monopolistic competition what about oligopoly oligopoly is a little bit similar with monopolistic competition but there are small small firms who are competing with each other you know small firms or companies they are competing with each other in the market is called oligopoly when it comes to monopolistic competition large firms or companies competing with each other but when it comes to monopoly it is the single firm or company who is controlling the whole market system so we shall see the average revenue and marginal revenue in this imperfect competition So the concept of total average and marginal revenue are represented in this table number two. So under imperfect competition, the total, the average, the marginal revenues are explained with the help of this tabular form, that is table number two. So again, this, as I have mentioned, there are basically three forms of imperfect competition oligopoly monopoly and monopolistic competition so under these forms of market under this market form there is imperfect competition you know as you will see from this table number two that as more units of product or more unit of a commodity are produced and are sold by the firm its price or the average revenue will fall as you can see from here under imperfect competition, what you have to understand is as number of units produced by a firm increases or sold increases, number of sold item increases by the firm, the average revenue or the price decreases. So that you have to understand that you have to first keep in your mind. And when it comes to imperfect competition, that is oligopoly, monopoly, monopolistic competition, they are all different forms of imperfect competition. And demand curve facing an individual firm under this imperfect competition, they slope downward. So it will be a downward sloping demand curve when it comes to imperfect competition. So you will see from this column 3 that as number of units sold and produced is increasing from 1, 2, 3, 4 to 10, you will see that this average revenue or price is declining or it is falling from 16, 15, 14, 13 till 7, uh, 7 rupees or the average revenue or prices. So it is falling, it is declining when the number of units sold is increasing by the firm. And when it comes to marginal revenue, we have already studied how to find out the marginal revenue which can be obtained or found out by taking out the differences between the successive, between the two successive total revenue. So when we take the difference of these two total revenue, what we will get is the marginal revenue.
so you we can obtain the marginal revenue from the total revenue by taking the differences between two successive total revenue and that is how we obtain the marginal revenue so what happens uh, what is the situation of marginal revenue under imperfect competition let us see so we have obtained this marginal revenue by you know taking the differences between the two successive total revenues so thus when one unit is sold you know 16 total revenue is obtained and second unit is sold then 30 so when we minus this what we get is six, uh, 16 here it is 16 and 30 minus 40 minus 30 is 14 and 52 minus 42 is 12 so to obtain marginal revenue we are taking the differences between of the between two successive total revenue and it is recorded in column 4 so that is how we got marginal revenue and you will see that marginal revenue is also declining from 16 to 14 to 12 to 10 and even to a negative point so you will see here marginal revenue when number of unit is sold number of units sold is increasing from 9 to 10 you will see that marginal revenue is experiencing a negative fall as it is recorded in this column four so you will see that as the firm increases the number of units sold to from nine to ten you will see that it is declining to a negative value it becomes negative you know when total revenue declines so that's when you know total revenue declines from rupees 72 to rupees 70 and therefore the marginal revenue is negative and it is equal to minus 2 so it is declining when number of units sold is increasing so in all forms of imperfect competition that is monopolistic competition oligopoly and monopoly you know the average revenue curve facing an individual firm they slope downward so it is a downward sloping demand curve this is because under perf imperfect competition when a firm increases its level of output you know the price of its product falls so under imperfect competition when a firm wants to increase the quantity of product that is produced if they want to increase then they have to reduce their price or price has to fall for that particular product that is why re i'll repeat again under imperfect competition when a firm increases its level of output the price of its product falls that is why we have a downward sloping demand curve facing a for of for a average revenue you know we have a downward sloping average revenue curve under imperfect competition because when a firm increases its level of output the price of its product falls so under imperfect competition you know the case when average revenue when AR or price falls as additional unit of product are sold in the market you know they are represented in this figure 2 so in panel a this is panel a of figure 2 the total revenue curve is rising up to output oq1 so this is the total revenue curve panel a is discussing about the total revenue and panel b is average and marginal revenue curve so in both the panel a and b x exists we are measuring the output the level of output that is produced and on the y axis we are measuring here total revenue and in this panel b average revenue and marginal revenue and o is the origin in both the panel so in panel a the total revenue curve is rising 
up to output OQ1. Let us say here OQ1, it is rising till OQ1 level of output, but at a declining rate. They are increasing, but at a declining rate. You know, this means that mar marginal revenue, which is equal to the slope of the total revenue. So, this is the slope of the total revenue curve, and slope of total revenue is equal to the marginal revenue so it is rising but at a decreasing rate and we have also discussed the property of this you know curve under law of variable proportion they are increasing rising at a decreasing rate and it is declining throughout as you will see from this graph here the slope when you look at the slope so corresponding to output OQ1, we have drawn a tangent at so tendency. This is the tangent line which is you know cutting the total revenue curve at point A. So corresponding to this output OQ1, we have drawn a tangent line which is cutting the total revenue curve at point A. So measuring the slope of this tangent. It will give us a marginal revenue which is equal to Q1 M1. So Q1 M1 it is not M1 Q1 M Q1 M. So after drawing a tangent line when we measure the slope of this curve it will give us a marginal revenue which is equal to Q1 M1 which is represented in panel B so this is the slope after drawing a tangent line corresponding to output OQ1 which is touching the you know cutting the total revenue curve at point A what we get is the slope what we get will be equal to Q1 M as represented in panel B which we have shown in panel B at figure 2 so that is corresponding to OQ1 level of output and again at OQ1 level of I mean OQ2 level of output we have again draw a tangent line cutting the total revenue curve at point B so again after measuring the slope of this tangent is zero the slope of this tangent is zero corresponding to output level OQ2 and therefore in panel B corresponding to OQ2 level of output you know the marginal revenue is shown to be zero here so at OQ2 level of output corresponding to this we have drawn a tangent line touching total revenue curve at point B and this will give us a slope which is equal to zero and that is why in panel B it is representing here at OQ2 level of output you know the marginal revenue is zero here this point OQ2 level marginal revenue is touching the origin which is zero so from the total revenue curve in panel A of the figure 2 we can obtain the average revenue at various levels of output by drawing you know rays from the origin to the corresponding points on the total revenue curve so we have drawn a rays corresponding to the you know tangent line corresponding to the output level that is how we can obtain the marginal revenue and also the average revenue that is how we obtain the average revenue at various levels of output you know by drawing rays from the origin to the corresponding points on the you know total revenue curve so thus at point OQ1 and OQ2 we have drawn rays OA and OB respectively for OQ1 and OQ2 level of output so measuring the slope of this race that is OA and OB while measuring these slopes 
it gives us average revenue that is q1 heads q1 heads and at output level or q1 after drawing the race to obtain average revenue we are measuring the slope of that average revenue curve corresponding to the various output that is oq1 and oq2 and at oq1 level output our slope is equal to q1 h level of slope and then q2t q2t for level of output oq2 as shown in panel b of figure 2 so by drawing rays from the origin to the various points on the total revenue curve it will be found that you know the slope of the rays as we have just measured here q1h and q2t the slope of the rays to various points will be declining as output so increases so you will see that as output increases from oq1 to oq2 the slope earlier it was q1h and now when output increase from oq1 to oq2 the slope has declined from q1h to q2t so you will see that this slope is declining as number of unit increases that is what we have found out as given in panel b of figure 2 so it will be observed that you know the average revenue curve the ar curve is falling downward and marginal revenue curve also lies below it you will see from this panel b that the average revenue curve is sloping downward and marginal revenue will be below average revenue curve the fact that you know marginal revenue lying below ar curve indicates that you know the marginal revenue declines more rapidly than this average revenue curve so when oq2 units of good are sold marginal revenue is zero here when our q2 level of output is sold marginal revenue as we have said is zero here so if the quantity sold is increased beyond oq2 level of output you know the total revenue decreases and therefore marginal revenue becomes negative as also seen in the table after reaching a certain level of output if it goes further then the marginal revenue will become negative which means that as units of output is increased level of output sold is increased then the output uh, the average revenue or marginal revenue declines and even it will give a negative value when it increases further to after reaching a certain level of output so that is what is indicated or presented graphically in figure 2 with the help of panel A which is discussing about the total revenue curve and B is about average and marginal revenue curve. So this diagram is nothing but it is just showing us that as number of output is increased then the average revenue and the marginal revenue falls or declines and it will even give us a negative value. So under imperfect competition, the average revenue and marginal revenue falls as number of units sold is increased.